Floss Tube friends, welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcomes to you all. So I have a question that I always get on this channel. And that question normally revolves around fabric choices, fabric sizes, but most importantly, and the one that I'm looking to attack today is how do I know what size fabric I need for my new project? Now I'm sitting here about to kit up and arrange for a new start. Yes, I know you didn't know that, but you do now. So because I'm sitting here doing my calculations for myself, I thought it best that I use this opportunity to help those that are still struggling with that. How do you work out your fabric size? Now, yes, there are apps out there that can help you. I can, I can put a list of apps in the description box below where you can use an app. You put all the details in and it spits out what you need. However, we don't need an app. You don't need an app for it. It's actually a lot more simple than you realize. And for me personally, sometimes I like to sort of, I like to pick a design and then decide, do I want it bigger or do I want it smaller? And of course, what designates whether it's bigger or smaller is the fabric count that we actually put it on. Just because a pattern or chart suggests that you use a certain thread count for one project, and there may be some alternative suggestions. That doesn't mean that you have to stitch on the suggested fabric counts. That said, there are some considerations that need to be made at the time of adjusting the recommended or the suggested alternative fabrics. Now, the first and most important one is if you are stitching a lovely lady or a Mirabilia or a Bella Filipina or a Chatelaine or something where there's beads and treasures that will be put onto the fabric. At that point, the only thing that I would say is if you are new to this, be careful not to go too much smaller than the suggested. The reason for that is, although the stitching will get bigger or smaller in accordance with whatever fabric count you choose to stitch on, the beads are set size. So unless you're prepared to either change the size of your beads or adjust the number of beads that you maybe might or that would normally fit in the space, you might need to space them out yourself. So that can complicate things a little bit more. So if you're new and fresh to all this, my suggestion would be if it's got beads on it, don't veer too far away from the suggested size, purely because it it's a lot harder for you to adjust the sizing that you need for your beads or the spacing that you need to get all of your beads on. That's not to say you have to put all the beads on just because it's 10 beads in a row on the chart. If your stitching is that much smaller, then you would just put in as many beads as would fit. But of course, these charts are designed to be on fabrics and stitched to a specific so that the beads fit nicely. Now, before we worry about where we're at if we start stitching on even weeds and we're stitching over two. Let's first of all concentrate on when we are stitching over one. So at what point would you be stitching over one? So if you are stitching over one, the chances are you're either working on some sort of full coverage or you are working on an ADA of some description. Now, one thing to bear in mind, when you are working on any fabric, the bit that doesn't seem to make any sense, but it does when I explain it, is that the higher the number that goes, the smaller the stitching becomes. I know, seems the wrong way around, right? But it isn't. Because in actual fact, when we are working out our thread count, our thread count is based on stitches per inch. So when we are looking at a 14 count, Ada, a 14 count basically means there is 14 holes within one inch. 16 count Ada, guess what? 16 holes per one inch and so on. So although you're sitting there saying, but it's more stitches, Teresa, it may be more stitches, but because there's more stitches in that same one inch, your stitching gets smaller. I know. So always have that in the back of your mind when you're considering your stitching. The next thing you need to remember and ask yourself is if, say, for instance, you're looking at a heaven and earth design chart and their suggestion on most of them, their suggestion is stitching on a 25 count. 
Now, not everyone can stitch on a 25 count, right? But you can stitch on an Ada. Now, we all know that stitching on a 25 count, one over one, versus stitching on an 18 count, one over one, on an Ada, the Ada is easier to see. So always be mindful that if you are looking at different fabrics, they are fabrics that you're going to be comfortable to stitch on. There's no point in you looking at really high count fabrics if your eyes are really going to struggle and you're not going to find it enjoyable. So take those things into consideration and then I think you're pretty much good to go. Now, what do you need? I hear you say, what, what do I need? All you need at this current moment in time is a pen, some paper, and if like me, you are maths challenged because I am terrible at maths, a calculator. Now, you don't need to, if, if you're good at maths, if you're one of those people that's actually really good at tallying it all up in your head, then you don't need a calculator. But if you want to make this super, super, super simple, then you will have a calculator. So for simplicity, I am going to share with you the design that I am looking to stitch. So the design that I'm looking to stitch is the Stocking Deer Creek by Heaven and Earth Design. It's artwork by Donna Gelsinger. And you can see... But it says a finished design size is 336 stitches wide by 453 stitches high. And then in brackets, it is showing me that it's 13 and 3 eighths wide inches by 18 inches high. If I stitch it on a 25 count fabric. Now, I've decided that I have got lots of full coverages that are on 28 counts. They're on 25 counts. And... I'm rather looking forward to going back to stitching on some 18 count Ada because I always found stitching my full coverages on an 18 count Ada was just super easy, super easy. There's big, big stitches, big holes. And because it's an Ada versus an even weave, I just find it, yeah, it was always easier to stitch on. As this is a stocking, I've decided that I would rather like to do it on an 18 count Ada. Now, because I'm doing it on an 18 count Ada, the sizing that it's giving me there is completely not what it's going to be because I want to stitch it on something different. So if like me, you want to try and stitch on a 14 count, a 16 count, an 18 count, a 20 count, it's all optional. A 28 count. Now, most heaven and earth designs and most people that stitch them will stitch over one on most counts. Now, there are some people out there that might stitch it on an extremely high count and stitch it over two, but we're not going to go there. We're, we're looking at just over one stitching right now. Let's keep it simple, people. So, your pen and paper. And you can either follow along with me with my chart, or if you have a chart in mind that you haven't already got kitted up with some fabric and you want to give this a go, then go grab your chart or your pattern and we can do this together. So I like to visualize. I'm a visualized person. People just explaining things to me and for me to try and digest it in my head doesn't come naturally. So how do I do mine? Well, first things first, I get a piece of paper and I sort of replicate a shape. Now I don't replicate the shape. So for instance, I'm doing a stocking. I don't draw a picture of a stocking, but I do draw a rectangle. I know. So because mine is in like a portrait appearance, so basically it's, it's taller and longer, but more narrow, I will draw myself a rectangle that sort of represents a portrait rectangle. If, however, yours is like a landscape, so in other words, it's wider than it is tall, then I would draw my rectangle as if it is landscape. Now, I know what you're thinking. So you're like, oh, Teresa, if, if I'm doing um, an ornament and it's a circle, I draw a circle, right? No, you don't draw a circle. You draw either a square or you draw another rectangle. Just something that your circle would fit into. Because when we are stitching on our fabric, we don't cut it into a circle. So the first things that we need to look at are the total number of stitches. So we've drawn, we've drawn our rectangles or our squares, whichever, whichever suits your design best. And now I'm going to put some numbers to it. 
So for me, my stitch width is 336. So along the top, because I'm looking at what the width is, I will write my 336 along the top of my rectangle. If you are using your own chart, then you will put whatever your width is. So along the sides, I know that my overall height of stitching is 453. So I will write 453 along the side. Here's where the super duper easy math comes in. To get the size that you need of the stitched area, you are going to take your total number of stitches and you are going to divide them by your fabric count. Now, when we're talking fabric count, you could be talking a 14 count Ada, 16 count Ada, an 18 count Ada, a 20 count Ada, a 22 count, a 25 count even weave, a 28 count even weave, a 32 count even weave. The list goes on, people. So all you are going to do is you are going to take your total number of stitches on your width and you are going to divide it by whatever that number is. See, I told you, it's really easy. It's really easy. So I've got my, my handy dandy calculator here. So for me, that will be 336 wide. And I'm going to divide that because I know I want to stitch mine on an 18 count Ada. I'm going to divide it by 18, which is going to give me 18.66. So as my calculation comes out at 18.66, I'm, I'm a rounder upper, but I won't round down. I never go downwards, I'll only go up. Anything with that second, that last digit on the end, anything on that last digit that goes more than five, I will round the number up. So because mine says 18.66, I will go 18.7. And that's it. That's, that's as technical as I get. So I'm going to go 18.7 and that is inches. So what that's told me is my 336 stitches divided by my thread count of 18 means that my width of stitching, now don't think that we stop there, but the width of my stitching, so the total design size, I need fabric 18.6. Okay, so that's for my width. So I'll write that at the top so that I know what my width inches of fabric is that I need. So now I'm going to move on to my height. So again, I'm going to go 453 and I'm going to divide that by my 18, which is my 18 count Ada. And that comes out to 25.16 inches. So again, because the six is higher than a five, I will round that first number up. Instead of it being a one, I will round it up to a two and I will drop that last number. So now I know that the height of my stitching, so this is just the design itself, is going to be 25.2 inches high. So that is the design size, okay? But we don't stop there. And this is where I think people have a bit of an issue because they do this calculation, they go, oh, I've done it, and then find that their fabric's too small. So there's an extra step here that we need to do. And that extra step is we need to add our margins because without margins, we're literally, we've got enough fabric just to get the stitching on and nothing else. There's no, there's nothing to finish it with. There's no edges, there's no margins, there's no nothing. I personally... <laughs> I'm rather generous with my margins, I'll be honest. For me personally, I'm normally around a three to four inch extra margin. One, because it just gives me a bit more wiggle room. So because I like to go, I would say closer to four inches. Most people, I think, think that three inches is more than enough. Because bearing in mind, we're not just adding three inches. Because you need to have three inches on the left, three inches on the right, three inches on the top and three inches on the bottom. So let's get some margins on here so that we can work out exactly what size we need. So if we go back to our width, now we know that for mine, I need 18.7 inches wide. Now, you can choose to do this however you wish. 
I personally know that I want to put four inches on one side and four inches on the other side, just because I love extra wiggle room. Now I know four and four is eight. So rather than doing them separately, I can do them together. Whatever your width is in inches. So for me, that's 18.7. And then I'm going to add eight because I'm adding eight more inches. So that's 26.7 inches wide is what I need for my fabric. So we've looked after our margins for the left and the right, and now we're gonna do exactly the same for the top and the bottom. So for me, my stitched height of the actual design is 25.2. And again, I'm doing mine in four inches. So I'm gonna have four inches at the top and four inches at the bottom. So four and four, that's eight. So I'm gonna do my 25.2, and then I'm gonna add eight. So that gives me 33.2 inches. So I now know, just by using my calculator and a little rectangle on a bit of paper, that my fabric size needs to be 26.7 inches wide, 33.2 inches high. And that is my cut lines. That is, that is the piece of fabric size that I need to do my stitching on. So now you may be looking at whatever your figures have turned out and you're like, wow, that's a big project. <gasps> that's way bigger than I wanted. Now, if you have no problem with your eyesight and you have no problem whatsoever stitching on a higher count, you may decide that actually I'd rather my project be a little bit smaller than that. And this is the beauty about doing the calculations yourself because we've already got all the measurements around our little rectangle now. So I could sit here and say to myself, well, 33 inches high by 26 inches high uh, wide, that's, that's big. That's either the fabric is bigger than I want it to be or the stitched area. So where mine is 18.7 inches wide and 25.2 inches tall, I might be like, wow, that's, that's like super big, right? So I'm like, okay, well, may, maybe I need, to, I need to take my fabric count up because I want to make my stitching smaller. So as an example, just I'm just going to throw this so that you can see what I mean and what happens when you still keep all those numbers, but then you can just do another set of calculations. So say, for instance, I'm like, that's a bit too big for me, so I want something smaller. Maybe I want to stitch on it, I don't know, um, on a 28 count. Let's, let's say I want to stitch it now on a 28 count because I want to make my project smaller. Is it going to make it that much smaller that I'm going to think, oh, that's so much better? You know, even for the fact that it's going to be harder to stitch on because it's smaller holes. Just as an example, I'm going to show you what I mean. This is the difference between whether you stitch on something on an 18 count Ada versus a 28 count even weave. You're still stitching over one, but like I say, if you want something to be that much smaller, just by changing your fabric count is what will determine how big or how small the project will actually turn out to be. So we've got all the measurements around the outside showing what it is if we do it on an 18 count. So all we're going to do, we're going to take our same stitch count and instead of dividing it by 18 for the 18 count ADA, we're going to divide it by 28. We are going to take our stitch width, which is 336. So 336 and instead of dividing it by 18, I'm going to divide it by 28, which is going to give me 12 inches. OK, so on my width, it's going to be 12 inches. So then for the height, I've got 453 stitches and I'm going to divide that by 28. And that's going to give me 16 point It's 17. So I'll make it 16.2 inches. Now, again, we need to add our margins. Again, it's irrelevant as to what stitch count, what fabric count I'm stitching on. I will always go with a four inch border. Here we go again. And this is for the 28 count. So for the 28 count, we have got a width of 12. So again, I can either do it that I'm going to do four inches for the left plus my 12 inches of stitching area plus four inches on the right, which will give me a total width of 20 inches. So for my height, again, I could do it the same way. I could do four plus whatever the stitching area is plus another four. 
I already know that 4 of 4 is 8, so let me do it the other way around. I've got my 16.2 inches tall, and I'm just going to add 8, because I'm adding 8 inches. And that gives me a total of 24.2. Now, there is the difference, people. So if I stitch it on a 28 count, my overall fabric size, this is my cut size, needs to be 20 inches wide by 24.2 inches high. If I wanted to stitch it on my 18 count, I need 26.7 inches wide, which is much bigger, that's 6.7 inches wider than on the 28 count. And my height is 33.2. So that is a difference of 33.2. See, I told you I need a calculator minus the 24.2 if I'm doing it on a 28 count. That is a whopping four inches difference in fabric size. Now, obviously, stitch size probably doesn't look quite as drastic. It's because I've got four inch margins all the way around. But like I say, you don't have to have four inches. You could have three inches. I personally wouldn't go less than three inches because there's not enough wiggle room there. But this just goes to show how super easy it is. So just because something suggests that you should use a certain count doesn't mean that we have to, especially when we're stitching over one with things like full coverages um, or we're stitching on aders. Because again, as an example, if I decided, <laughs> I wouldn't, but if I decided I wanted to stitch a heaven and earth design stocking on a 14 count, it would be bigger again. It would be bigger than the 18. But that way I would have a informed decision to make. One, do I want to stitch it on that count? Am I capable of stitching it on that count? Versus, do I want to see what the difference is in size of fabric? So working out your fabric size is as simple as that. Now, the only time that there is a slight change and it's basically just an extra step to the calculation is if we are stitching over two. Now, when would you stitch over two? Personally, a lot of the fabrics and a lot of the designs for the Mirabilias, the Bella Filipinas, and anywhere where I'm stitching an even weave that isn't a full coverage, I like to stitch over two. So when we decide we're gonna stitch over two, there is an extra step to the calculation. For season stitchers, you understand the concept of what it means when we stitch over two versus when we stitch over one. You can see here that there's a, a ruler, there's, there's some even weave. And within that even weave, you can see that I've, I've done X's where it shows where you stitch over two. And then I've done a block of stitching where it's one square if it was stitched over one. So that gives you a concept. So you can see quite easily from there that in actual fact, when we stitch four little stitches on an even weave, if we stitch over two, it's exactly the same size. Now, this is where your extra step comes into play. So when you are doing your fabric calculating when you're stitching over two, believe it or not, Whatever your fabric count is, if you've decided you're gonna stitch it over two, this is not if you're stitching it over one, only if you're stitching over two, you are gonna take your higher count even weave and you're gonna divide it by two. And you're like, well, why would we do that? The reason you're doing that is because you're not actually stitching over one, you are stitching over two. So if you get yourself a piece of 14 count Ada and you put a few crosses on it, and then you get yourself a 28 count even weave and you do stitching over two for a few crosses and then you put them side by side, you will see that actually, because you are stitching over two, the size of the cross is exactly the same on a 14 count Ada as it is on a 28 count. The only difference is the 14 count Ada is stitching over one and the 28 count even weave you are stitching over two. So for ease, I've put it here over on the left-hand side, some of the common, the common divisions for our higher count even weaves. So when we are working out our calculation for our fabric, because we are not stitching over one, we are stitching it over two, there is an extra step on the calculation. So as an example, to try and show the example for the stitching over two, I've decided to use my lovely project, Magwayan. So my Bella Filipina Magwayan, you can see on here, it's giving me my 
185 stitches wide by 300 stitches high. So I can see very, very easily that it is portrait because it is much, much taller than it is wider. So I'm going to draw myself a, another rectangle in a portrait orientation. Now, the beauty of some like the Bella Filipinas is that they do actually give you options on sizes. And you can see here, it says a 14 count, 16 count and 18 count. So a 14 count, it's basically saying that the stitched area will be 13.21 inches wide by 21.43 inches high. For a 16 count, you can see it gets a little bit smaller and that is 11.56 inches wide by 18.75 inches. And then if you go for an 18 count Ada, it gets even smaller again, and that is 10.25 by 16.67. So the 14 count, 16 count, and 18 count confuses a lot of people because it's like, well, I don't see that many people that stitch these on Ada, especially when you've got partial stitches, they're always stitched on an even weave. Well, the reason they're giving you this is because when we stitch over two, we divide it by two. So because they're saying a 14 count, I know that in actual fact, that would be a 28 count if I stitch it over two. The 16 count is actually a 32 count even weave and the 18 count is a 36 inch even weave. But because we are stitching it over two, you divide the fabric. So that is why it doesn't say 32 count, 28 count and 36 count. It actually says a 14 count, 16 count and 18 count. That just goes to prove that if you wanted to, if you didn't want to try and attack even weaves, you could stitch it on a 14 count, 16 count, 18 count, but you can also stitch it on a 28 count, a 32 count and a 36 count over two. So, I don't really need to add anything to that because it's already, it's been good enough to give me the sizes of the actual stitching if I want to stitch on one of those counts. So as an example, I tend to always veer more towards the 28 counts just because, just because I can. So for the 28 count, so the 28 count is actually the 14 count. So that is 13.21 inches wide by 21.43 inches high. So for me, all I need to do is add my margins. Again, I will use a four inch margin. So I'm gonna put four inches on one side and four inches on the other side. So I'm gonna put in my calculator 13.21 inches. And then I'm gonna add four inches for one side and I'm gonna add four inches for the other side, which gives me a total width of 21.21. So that is the overall width of fabric that I need. So now for my height, it will be 21.43 inches high. I'm gonna add four, and then I'm gonna add four again. And that's gonna give me my height, which is 29. Now it says 0.43, but I'm gonna say it's 29.5. It's as easy as that. So like I say, the only extra step you are doing for stitching over two is instead of saying that you're gonna divide by the actual count, which would be 28 count or 25 count or 36 count or 32 count, all you're gonna do is divide the number. Divide the number because you're stitching over two. It's as easy as that, people. And that way you can decide and choose whatever fabric count you decide for almost any project just by using a calculator, a pen, and a pencil. That is it, it's as simple as that. We don't need an app to work this out. But like I say, I'm a visualizer, so for some people that you know have been struggling with it, I get it. That is how I do mine. I tend to find that although I might say to myself, oh, I wanna do it on a certain count, I might give myself some options. So I might say, well, I'll calculate what it'd be on a 25 count, but also on, say, a 22 count, um, but also on an 18 count. And then that way I will then decide, actually, do I want to make it easier on my eyes, but it's going to be a bigger project or do I make it, the stitching maybe a little bit trickier? You know, I need my magnifiers for it because it's going to be smaller, but the actual project is going to be a lot smaller. So it gives you the flexibility. Also, we have to take into consideration framing. If we're going to frame something, if all of a sudden you've got this giant piece of stitching, it's going to cost you a lot to frame it. Unless, of course, you're framing it yourself. Hopefully, I have demystified the how you calculate your fabric sizes for what you need. This was mainly geared to those that I think were, were more looking at how do they work out for their full coverages. 
you know, for do they stitch on a low account or a high account? You know, especially for those that have never never stitched on an even weave before and are a little bit scared of it. They're like, well, I'd rather stay with a with an ADA, but obviously that you know the chart says twenty five count. I, you know, I don't want to stitch on a cut twenty five count, so I don't know how big or small it needs to be. There you go, people. It is all it is all right there. You can take screenshots of this video. You can you can write it all down. You can give yourself an example to work from. That is how I do mine. It's as simple as that. I hope this has helped in some way for those of you that have been struggling with how you work out your fabric sizes. On that note, I now need to go and organize my flosses for my new start. Now that I know that I am going to be stitching on my 18 count ADA for my stocking, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And until next time, bye-bye for now. <laughs>